Hello and welcome to The Secrets of Stargate, where we talk about the hidden meanings and deeper layers found in the Stargate's movies and series, including SG-1, Atlantis Universe, and more. I'm Father Corey Stika. With me today are Lisa Jones and Victor Lambs. Howdy, Lisa. Hey, Father Corey. And howdy, Victor. Hey, Father Corey. Before we begin, we'd, I'd like to dis- invite you to join our Discord server. You can find it at sqpn.com slash Discord. We're having a lot of fun there, and we'd love to hear what you have to say about this show and all our shows. Also, you could go to sqpn.com slash merch and get t-shirts, mugs, stickers, and much more. Today, we're discussing Prodigy, and not the Star Trek series, but just Aww. the 19th episode from the fourth season of Stargate SG-1. If, like Victor, you'd like to hear about the Stargate series Prodigy, you can go over to the secrets of Star Trek for that. Sam gets a mini-me! Jennifer Haley is a hard-headed cadet at Air Force Academy who is perfect at everything, just like Sam. So, of course, Sam wants to recruit her for the SGC after she graduates and becomes a mentor to her. Jennifer resists, of course, until Sam takes her to the SGC and lets her step through the Stargate. Meanwhile, Jack and Tilk are babysitting a number of temperamental and arrogant scientists, I mean, as if there are any other kind of (laughs) scientists, on a moon around a gas giant. While keeping the scientists from being killed, they find an energy life form that can pass through solid matter but seems peaceful. However, after Sam and Cadet Haley arrive on the moon, but not related to their arriving, the life form become aggressive and kill one of the scientists. Fortunately, they are repelled by electric fields, including a Zat blast and the giant field produced by an active stargate. The scientists and SG personnel are able to escape through the gate, and Cadet Haley decides to recommit herself to graduating from the Academy so she can join the SGC. So, Lisa, what do you think of this one? Uh, I've always liked this episode. I know it's considered one of the weakest of season four, but uh, re-watching, I think <laughs> maybe it's the mom in me because <laughs> I, really, I really liked Carter's like, stop it. Here's your future. Get your act together and yeah. go. And <laughs> Yeah. Maybe because I have young adult children, I like that. Um, but I thought it was a nice kind of way to show Carter in a different light and have her really excited about somebody else. Rather than threatened by Haley's uh, brains, she was excited for the for the future of the program. And then uh, who can forget uh, Jack's scene being so starstruck with uh, General Ryan. So oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a nice little little scene. So we'll I, I like it. It's, uh, it's, it it's not like the best episode ever, but it's 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 good. I mean, it's watchable, and I enjoy it. How about you, Victor? Yeah, it it's not as bad an episode as I think I remembered it. <laughs> um, I hadn't seen this one in a very long time, and so I was watching it. And you know, there's the I don't know which you'd consider the a plot. Uh, Jack and Teal kind of just bumming around the planet with the moody scientists. And then the B plot, I guess we'll, we'll say, which is, you know, Sam giving a lecture at uh, Air Force Academy. And then, you know, there's the young upstart cadet who corrects her, you know, math on the on the whiteboard and is just too cool for school and too smart <laughs> for her own britches or whatever. And so, you know, I, I, I did think the, the, the scene where Sam finally kind of dresses her down was was very nice. Um, and then they bring the two plots together, which is always cool. Stargate. Yep does that a little bit better than, you know, the older Star Trek shows would do where, you know, the next generation era where they would have like an A, B and a C plot and they would, you know, sometimes but not always intersect. And so we get an action, you know, escape from the planet of the, you know, angry Tinkerbells or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's, 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 it, it comes together at the end and, um, you know, I, I, I kind of like it. Yeah, I, I agree with you both. It, it, this was an episode, and you know, I was kind of groaning when I saw this was the next episode, because I, I, I think I always had this in the impression in my mind that this wasn't a very good episode, but it's, it's, it's not bad. And, you know, I mean, faint praise, it, it, it's definitely better than most of season one, but that's, again, not, not saying much, <laughs> Yeah, but it, it's not a bad episode. It actually turns out uh, to be a much better episode than I remember. Mm-hmm. I do think the off-planet plot was a lot more interesting ironically with the yeah scientists than the uh on-planet plot but of course you know that's two-thirds of the episode you know a third of the episode is at the academy a third of the episode is just jack and tilk and then a third of the episode is all of them together so 
it actually works out pretty well that that's the more interesting part, in my opinion. But no, it, it is an episode I enjoy. Now, I, I, I get a kick, uh, at least about you mentioning uh, General Ryan, and that was General Michael Ryan, who was at the time the Air Force Chief of Staff. And that's not the only time we've seen the Air Force Chief of Staff show up on Stargate. And that was part of the deal, I guess you could say, for the benefits that Stargate got with working with the Air Force so closely is they had to uh, deal with a a few generals showing up once in a while that are real (laughs) Air Force generals, as you could tell by their lack of acting. Well, and the fact that Jack is like so starstruck by him, which is totally out of character for Jack. Jack Jack would be like, oh, hey, general, you know, where's that requisition? Or are we getting more weapons to defeat the ghoul with or something? (laughs) Instead, it's like, you know, in the the 70s and 80s when they'd have a guest guest star walk on the show and all the characters would be like, Chicago Bears star William Refrigerator Perry? Yeah. (laughs) You know, and and they'd be like, whoa. And he'd be like, hey, I'm William Refrigerator Perry. You stay in school, kids. And then he'd like leave. I was thinking of Scooby Doo and the uh, yeah Carlo Globetrotters oh, yeah yeah <laughs> Don Knotts yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah I think that's why they had Jack make such a big deal because I think most of us would have no idea that yeah. he wasn't an actor that he was the actual general so I, I, yeah. for, for me that's why I felt like they went over the top with it because otherwise yeah. we'd be like who where'd you get this guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I did I did like his turn to uh, General Hammond and be like. You got your hands full with that one, George. Uh, just, just, it was so hokey. I liked it. Yep. I'm trying to remember, too, if this is the first time we've seen the chief, Air Force Chief of Staff, or is this the second? This is the first one, I believe. It was the first one. Okay. Yeah. And the only, only reason why I remember him is he was the Chief of Staff the last year I was in the Air Force. Oh. From 97 to 2001. So actually, shortly after this aired, he retired as the, the Chief of Staff. But still, he was, you know, so I knew who, when I saw this the first time, mm-hmm. and it's like, I know that guy. I worked under him. I never met him, but I worked, <laughs> you know, technically worked under him as a member of the Air Force. So it's kind of kind of interesting to see that. And he's not the only one that's going to show up. We're going to see a mm-hmm. couple others, yeah. if I remember correctly. Yeah. And I guess there's that story out there that afterwards, Richard Dean Anderson asked him, do you actually, like, have colonels like me in the Air Force? <laughs> and <laughs> the general <laughs> responded, yes, and worse. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or words to that effect. That's great. Yeah. That would that would be fun uh, fun to 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 see though. Cuz yeah, I I'm sure like anything yeah. there's plenty of officers who fit General O'Neill or Colonel O'Neill soon General O'Neill's uh quality, shall we say. Yeah, a little, but, uh, a little bit of truth, a little bit of real life in every yeah. character. Well, of course, you know, one person I didn't mention in the the summary was Daniel. He's hiding. He's off with SG-11 again. Oh, yeah. Because. uh, The new SG-11. or Yeah, the the next uh, SG-11. Part three, I think, um, (laughs) at this point. Um, Because Michael Shanks was getting ready to uh, direct an upcoming episode. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. So he was. So instead of acting in this one, he was going to be. He was doing all his preparations for that. So. I don't know if that was, I think that's the first time he would, any of the, them had directed an episode. I think so. So. Oh, so Major Griff was SG2, which yep. last time, didn't SG2 all get? No. No, they got arrested, not killed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They, they kind of went through the gate while SG1 stayed behind, I think. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where... Um, Steve ba- uh, Bakic's character is a member ah. of SG2. Uh, Major, I forget to forget his face, but you know Telemachus okay. Rade from Andromeda. I yeah. was th- oh sorry, I was thinking they all gotten killed, and he was the new guy brought in too. Nope. So uh, SG2 has never gotten wiped out. Now they've lost members, but they, I don't think they've okay. gotten wiped out. Yeah, I think it was SG3 who got wiped out on the planet of the Unas, or it could have been S- no SG10 was the black hole. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah there's- <laughs> I think it'd be easier to say which which SG teams which, did get wiped out. Yeah. SG one. I need a right, SG one. SG one. Uh, no. <laughs> I need an infographic. I need a little infographic with little tombstones chart. or something. Yeah. We'll have to. We'll have to which, get which extinct SG one team or SG team are you? And it's a BuzzFeed quiz. Have, have the branches of SG teams. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyways, we got we got Sam who's off uh, finding this new promising young cadet. But of course, you know, 
what I can't believe is that she would actually be giving a presentation on multi-universe dynamics <laughs> to the Academy. I mean, that right there, first of all, yeah, like, no. <laughs> this is the end. You point at the enemy and then you pull this thing. Yeah. But yeah. Now the, the Academy <laughs> is a real university, although just like mm-hmm. West Point is like the, the Naval Academy is, but um, yeah, they're not going to be talking about that kind of, you know, theoretical physics or anything like that. Not on, not on a regular or even irregular basis. Did you say 10 dimensions? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, I would ass- it's a, it's a pretty prestigious university. Yeah, it is. I would assume that they have upper level. I don't even know what class that would be. Some sort of yeah. physics class. Yeah. Well, it, for, looked, yeah, it sounded for, like it was some kind of advanced science class. Yeah. And, uh, and that's where she finds this cadet Haley who discovers her mistake. She switched yeah. to, she yeah. switched to a plus and a minus. I like they say, oh, these two variables were switched. No, that means what was minus on the bottom should have been plus, And what was plus on the top should have been minus. Right. That's all you switched. It was two symbols. I, <laughs> they just I needed some, to uh, reverse the polarity. Somebody yeah. online saying, well, that just shows that Carter can make mistakes and be absent-minded like the rest of us and you know, yeah, write the wrong thing on the board. Said, okay. what, was, she, was she writing on the board though? Because then at the end, she totally didn't own, own up to it. She's like, that's not, what, but what's on the board was a mistake. Like somebody else put it up there. Well, she, uh, no, or, I, I thought she said that she, she reversed those. Okay. Maybe later on she did. But the first time they're like, she was like, uh, yeah, no, well, she, she found a mistake on the board or yeah, something. No, yeah. Was, that, you might be right though, but mistakes she was made. pointing at things on the board, but we don't see her actually yeah. picking up the whiteboard marker and writing on it. <laughs> But, but you know, it, it, it is interesting. Again, you've got almost another Mary Sue with the cadet. You know, she's perfect in everything and she's perfect in fighting and she's perfect in, in you know, aircraft, you know, flying air fighter craft and all this stuff. And it's like, how? <laughs> yeah. And, well, and she that only how will... they hmm? brought Carter in was that she was perfect at all those things, too. Yep. I mean, you go back to the first episode and that's. Yeah, you know, just that's because how she was her presented. organs are, that's yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> but no, and it, yeah, and the only reason that Haley would would ever hit somebody is if she's defending an underclassman, right? You know, she wouldn't, and it really isn't until Stargate Universe yeah. that we get members of the you know armed armed forces who are you know not perfect, right? Well, I did read that they the original plot line was for her to have gone AWOL mm. and to do something else, and the Air Force came back and said no. You can't, you can't have that plot line because basically she could still be a cadet. Like she'd be out, period. Yep. And so they made them change it mm, to something yeah. a little less uh, bad. Ris- less risque, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and I did actually see that uh, cadet Jennifer Haley was, if just by twist of fate, was actually one of the actresses being considered to play her was actually actress Jennifer Haley. <laughs> um. Who later on we'll see in 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 next ep- uh, next season's episode I think with the Russian she's part of the Russian SG team I think, um, but yeah the actress is so it's just funny that they wrote a part for the character named Jennifer Haley and one of the two people up for it was an actress named Jennifer Haley, but she didn't get it it was uh, played by uh, Elizabeth Rosen who comes back uh, in the same role uh, next season as well oh yes a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Comes back a couple more seasons, so, so of course, of course we see Sam, you know, trying to uh, help this this young struggling cadet who's so smart that she's bored, you know, and uh, <laughs> yeah, n- none of us have ever felt that way before. Oh wait, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and I, I do like you know you mentioned it earlier that the fact that Sam basically dresses her down a couple of times where she's thinking this this cadet thinks she's. Too good for school, too cool for school, as Victor put it. And Sam kind of says, well, you don't think the regulations apply to you? You know, and, and of course, Cadet keeps saying, no, you know, saying no. And it turns out, of course, the Cadet's just jealous because Sam got all the awards and got all the best scores and everything <laughs> before the Cadet did. You know? yeah, yeah, she's always been the smartest person and she can't yep. handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, the assignment was lame. That's, yes. Yeah. She says yes. It was lame. I, I've, I've tried that one too. I did do my homework because the yeah. assignment was lame. <laughs> lame. Yeah, it made the lame list. <laughs> did it work? <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
And I love that Carter didn't try to sweet talk her, didn't try to, oh, come on. You you know, mm. she just, she said, so what? Yeah. So yeah. what? That's, like, that's, and? <laughs> yeah. You're I feel like that's teenagers. a very yeah. late yeah. 90s, early 2000s way of thinking. I'm not sure that translates so much anymore, but as my well, kids would tell me. But that's, you know, it's like, and? You still got to get it done. You still got to, mm-hmm. you know, what? what's your alternative? Exactly. Yeah. Well, this is, this is a military mindset, of course. This is a cadet, a first-year cadet. And for, for those who don't know, that they go opposite. So your fourth-year cadet when you first start to first-year, because it's, it's like the military Oh, ranking. okay. So oh. She's, she's a senior in, in under, undergrad is basically what she is. And uh, she's getting, getting ready to graduate from the academy to go and be, you know, um, become an officer, become a second lieutenant, who we see next next season as a second lieutenant. Um, yeah, this is not a, a let's sit around and talk about our feelings of why you feel like you're so much better than everybody else. And, you know, it's like, no, you're going to be in the Air Force. You're going to be an officer. Do your job and yep. do your job as you're supposed to. <laughs> yeah. So this is a run out the clock situation. Get it done. You're so close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it's it and there's something the way the script kind of writes it where it says she, you know, she broke an, an upperclassman's nose. It didn't say that mm-hmm. she wasn't an upperclassman as well. Right. Oh, right. But Chloe Bennett or whatever the uh other person's name was was yep. I think a lower classman. So Yep, exactly. Probably a fourth or a third year cadet as I just learned. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um and it, it's well, of course, you know, there's hazing at the military. I know shock. Right. And so you can imagine that was probably, that's probably what it was. And she did, uh, cadet Haley didn't stand for it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I do like, there was one line she said though, uh, when Sam asked her, what were you thinking? She goes strike high. Yeah. Well, if you remember at this time, the air forces, uh, uh, recruiting slogan was aim high. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm wondering if they had to change that if the Air Force wouldn't let them use aim they high. Probably. I think the line was probably <laughs> right. going to be aim high and they had to change it. It and probably was. Sam's like, that's not funny or that is funny or something. But yeah, it's, it, like, it's funny. Way, it's we funny. can't have funny. Yeah. <laughs> not at the Air Force Academy. It's not allowed. Not intentionally yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> We're not allowed to have fun there. Uh-huh. Next, you'll be wanting to sing the wild blue blunder or something and make a joke <laughs> about that or something. Yeah. <laughs> Humor can't have it. Yeah. Can't do it. Yeah. So, anyways, that's the Air Force Academy. We got to see yeah. what was supposed to be the Air Force Academy, but of course, was a location in Vancouver. But we <laughs> did get to see some very grainy footage of oh, cadets man. marching. Yes! That did not stand up. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Find me of the scene in uh, Hot Shots when Lloyd Bridges is like yelling at the men to like march, and he's like. Get in shape, get in line, get in ring. They never listen to me. And he's been yelling at like a painting that's hanging on the wall of, of men marching. Yeah. It's just- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that did. I wonder, did it look bad originally or is it just because everything's gotten better and now I it stands out? have a feeling it depended on what kind of TV you had in 2000. If you yeah. still had a tube TV, it probably didn't look too bad. If you had a newer high definition TV, it probably did. I mean, my, my, copy is off a dvd so it's still only 48 480p Mm -hmm. and if it looked bad on my screen it probably looked bad on most (laughs) yeah yeah i was watching it looked terrible on mine (laughs) yeah it did (laughs) but oh well that's it's it's what happens when you use stock footage i mean exactly air force handed to something they filmed about the time i was in the air force and said here use this (laughs) yeah It's like they're sitting in a in like a set boat set, and they're like, "Look at that hippopotamus!" And then it's like very grainy, like uncolor corrected yep. footage yeah. of a hippopotamus. <laughs> well, I, I like the fact that they showed that Carter keeps in touch with the Air Force Academy and is mm-hmm. evidently going back frequently. Right. Her professor, they all knew who she was. They all acted like this was very normal for her to be there and yeah. and hanging yeah. out and encouraging, mentoring, and all that kind of stuff. So. I, I thought that was a, a nice, I don't know, for somebody who's very scientific and intellectual for her to be going back and doing that. Because whenever Daniel does it, his grandfather e- either ends up on the planet of the giant aliens or his ex-girlfriend gets turned into a ghoul. Right. So yeah. Daniel just needs to stop going back home. Yeah, he has, he has issues. So meanwhile, on the 
Planet of the Angry Fairies. <laughs> but now that we've talked about, you know, Sam becoming a mentor to this young cadet who's just as smart as she is, now they're going to come. They're, Sam decided to bring her against, apparently without the general understanding what's going on. General Hammond didn't even know what's going on until she just shows up, apparently. <laughs> bring this cadet to take her through the Stargate. So let's go to the planet where they're going to be going to, where Jack and Tilk are half bored and half ready to kill a bunch of scientists. It's a moon. A moon. It's a moon. Yes. <laughs> Good one. And, and what they, is they a moon? remind us? A planet that yeah. is trapped cap- around the orbit of planet. another planet. Yeah. <laughs> that's no moon. Actually, it is. Actually, it is. And that's a big planet. I, I did like how they did, the, you know, kind of the the faint, mo- uh, yeah, gas mm-hmm. giant, another moon, kind of in the in the sky. You know, that's pretty. Kind of looked like old uh, Star Trek uh, map painting, but still, it looked pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it was a digital mat or whatever they. Yeah. Yep. Of course, you ha- you had to have the crotchety scientists. You had to have the, yeah. you know, a- annoying, arrogant scientists who think they know everything and oh, nothing's going to happen here, till it does. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they thought they were at like a resort or something. They're always just like wanting to like wander off and follow these things. And, <laughs> yep. you know, Jack has to basically like camp out in there, like where he knows they're going to walk and like call him back and just say, where the heck are you going? Yeah. <laughs> that, well, I that love that where they're walking though. off, you know. Yeah. yeah. Love that where they're walking off and he's there. Yeah, and he's always there sitting there cleaning his, his M16. <laughs> And he, he stands up, oh, it's actually a P90 and kind of holds it. See? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Tilk gets to uh, say, you should listen to Colonel O'Neill and me because I was encountering alien species before you were born. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a, a good line from Tilk. That was good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You notice, uh, I, for- oh, I just forgot that doctor's name. But Hamilton? Yes. That, this was, is this the only time we see him? This was it for him, yeah. right? And I wondered if yeah. he was just a little too ornery for them to bring back. Because Dr. Lee is on 20 episodes. Yeah. And yep. we barely hear a word out of him this time. But the other one who talked the most, nope. Exactly. And we do get that um, that scientist in season one, and I forget his name, uh, Kavanaugh, I think, in season one of Atlantis, who's kind of a jerk to Dr. Weir. Yep. And mm-hmm. he used this as only t- chance to send a message home to like basically complain about what an awful job Dr. Weir is doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah. And so we, we do kind of get, you know, a version of that in Atlantis, which is kind of, it's kind of funny. But, um, and then of course we get other scientists like, you know, Rodney McKay and Dr. Mm-hmm. Felger later on in in SG-1 and stuff. But no, fortunately, Hamilton does not come back and neither does does, uh, Dr. Fairy Food. What's his name? Oh, Bill (laughs) Bill Thompson. Yeah, because he's kind of dead. Bill, Bill. (laughs) Yeah, Dr. Dr. Lee just kind of like booked it out of there. He's like, well, I can't save him. Let me get out of here. Exactly. (laughs) He's like six feet from him. He's like, help me, Dr. Lee. And and Dr. (laughs) Lee's like, uh, I'll nope. go over here and get help. Yep. Yeah. Hey, he Let me survived know here for a while to, yeah, to hang out on did. SGC a whole lot more. So that's true. <laughs> Good job. And he gets Atlantis too. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, and he, he gets, gets to, to help build the, uh, yeah, the gate mm-hmm. bridge. Yeah. He gets to be a fun character. Uh, but yeah, this is the first time we get to see him and, and, uh, he's not, he, you don't get quite the humor from him yet in this. It's yeah. mm-hmm. later on that we get to see a lot of that. So, so that's yeah, always he was on. He was on MacGyver in a couple episodes with Richard Dean Anderson. He was the one of the guys who basically had to have Richard Dean Anderson go into this ultraviolet chamber and like strip down and have the ultraviolet lights like decontaminate him and stuff. Yep. So, I, you know, I did I did get a kick out of the when when Jack and Tilk got to the planet and Major Griff's like, "Oh, good, you're back. I'm relieved. See ya." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll let you deal with that. <laughs> should have been a heads up, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's funny too, because like the teaser, like right before they go to the credits and you're like, um, you're like, oh, I wonder what this episode's going to be around. And then it's like, you know, it's basically ends just with Sam's talk in front of the chalkboard, you know, and the cadets are filing out and then it goes to credits and then it comes back and they're on the planet. And one of the characters says almost immediately, like, yeah, nonstop excitement. You know, (laughs) like, are you describing this episode so far? Yeah, exactly. But it picks up. (laughs) 
I like the I like the willow the little willow They're kind of a cool little creature. Mm-hmm. What'd you call them? Cool yeah. Little yeah. Tinkerbells or something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little <Later>, angry, angry <laughs> Tinkerbells. It's actually there's a I think season four or five episode of Supernatural called Clap Your Hands If You Believe. And not to spoil it, but it sets up as like, you know, they're in a town and UFOs have been visiting this town. But then it turns out that instead of UFOs, like fairies, because it's supernatural, not a sci-fi show, mm. fairies have been causing all the, all the problems. And actually, Robert Picardo plays a, a leprechaun in that episode. But oh, nice. um, yeah, and uh, it's a very funny, very funny episode written by Ben mm. Endlid, um, uh, who was the showrunner at the time. But um, yeah, so it was, it was just I kept I kept like thinking back to that episode and then. You know, other episodes where there's like, I think in um, the first like Hellboy movie, there's like, or a second one, there's like angry fairies and stuff. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought it was cool that they would, although these are, we don't know if they're really angry or not. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like one of the main yeah. points. Yeah. Yeah. They, they don't resolve if the reason why they became aggressive is because they got upset because one of their compatriots got captured. Turns out they mm-hmm. could be captured by electric fields. Or are they angry because they're affected by the entire planet's electric uh Magnetic field, and yes, the planet's electric field or magnetic field, because the the moon apparently has a polar orbit instead of a equatorial orbit. Ah, because that's where they talk about it's going through the top of the right, magnetic right. field mm. off the poles. And uh, Cadet Haley gets to quote Adric from Doctor Who at the end and say, "I'll never know if I was right." <laughs> yep. At least she gets to go on to have a career and he yes, and kills, kills off all the dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. I like that they didn't resolve who was right. That the, it, I like yep. Carter said it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We have to address the issue as is. How do we get out alive? And how do we deal mm-hmm. with it? And I thought that was kind of a nice between the competition of Carter and Haley. It doesn't matter who's right. Well, it was, it was a lesson for Haley that you don't always have to be right either. <laughs> and you don't always have to know you're right either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lesson in leadership too, for her, because it doesn't matter specifically to Jack O'Neill who's right or not, because mm-hmm. if, you know, if Haley's right, you know, they're, they're putting everybody's lives in, at risk. But if Carter's right, it's only Jack O'Neill's life, at least in the mm-hmm. short term, that's at risk because he makes a mad dash for the, for the gate. And so to, to a leader like Colonel O'Neill, it doesn't matter who's right. If he's the only one who's at risk, then that's mm-hmm. the decision that, mm-hmm. that he has to take. And we do get a funny scene because they've determined by now that if you zat somebody <laughs> um, that creates enough of an electric field to repel the, the bugs, at least for yep. a little bit. And, uh, and so there's a very funny scene where, where, you know, uh, Jack's asking Tilk to zat him and he's like, okay, just give me a warning. And, and Tilk's like, I'm about to shoot you. And you get this no, I was thinking on three. One, two, bzzz, you know. Yeah. yeah. One zap. Yeah. And he's laying yeah. on the ground writhing. Two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, then, you, then, you know, Cadet Haley is going, well, just shoot him again. Yeah. And Tilk's like, if a second shot will kill them, you know, a second yeah. shot from a zat will kill them, you know. I thought like Jack should have done a little dance when Tilk zatted Dr. Hamilton, though, or something. Yeah. <laughs> just because. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was kind of cool, though, when, when uh, Jack, of course, he gets to the star, he got zatted, and, and they are staying off of him, gets to the gate, he starts punching it in, and then they, mm-hmm. they start attacking him again, and Tilk shoots the ground in front of him. You see the, the wisps kind of like a bubble, but, you know, like their shield just pushed mm-hmm. him away. It was actually kind of a cool, yeah. cool little yeah. effect. I was thinking when they had them attacking his face, and I guess they're going through his cheek. I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah, they're phasing through him. Yeah. Yeah. It reminded me of uh, 2010 when he was getting struck by those yep. lasers. Yeah. It was the same, you know, kind of look on his face. Yeah. Same little burn mark or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, they got some great, uh, you know, whatever, medication from scarring. Frazier's. Yeah. <laughs> you really got to make that look good. Yeah, exactly. Holes in your cheeks. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure uh, Janet will have plenty of medication to take care of that. Yeah. Doctor Fraser will have plenty of medication yeah. <laughs> to handle that. Not a problem. Yeah. Um, another line, like I just looked it up because I didn't understand it. Um, when uh, when Teal'c stands up for 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 Jack, Jack goes, "Thank you, Rocco." Oh, yeah. And it's not a specific reference to anything in particular, but I did just see that somebody thought it was like in gangster movies, like there was always like a thug named Rocco yeah. or something who would always like say, listen to the boss, do what the boss says. And then the boss would be like, yeah, thank you, Rocco. 
Kind of like a and tiny. So yeah. Yeah. I'm get, that's, that might have been what they were referencing there. Huh. Um, yeah. Maybe <laughs> we're really reaching here. One, one thing I kind of did get a kick out of, though, was, you know, Sam would be talking about something like, you know, you're assuming that matter can only go or can go both ways through a wormhole. And she's like, well, no one's ever shown me a wormhole that doesn't. And, of course, Sam has to bite her tongue until... She gets to go through a wormhole, and oh, by the way, if you try to go back through this wormhole the wrong way, you go zap. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing poof. with the overlapping realities, right? Yeah. yeah. That they're like, they're like, how do you? Why would you think they could overlap? And she's like, <laughs> I've kind of seen it yeah. um, with our quantum mirror. Right. Yeah, I've kind of experienced it. You know? <laughs> That's gonna be really hard as a scientist not to be able to go. I've we've proven this. This this is how it goes. Yeah. We have no idea how it works and it almost destroyed the earth every time, but yeah. <laughs> but it still works. And I should also mention that uh, the guy who did say, did you say 10 dimensions during the lecture? That's um, Ivan R. Bartok, who is, mm-hmm. uh, was the executive assistant to Michael Greenberg and Richard Dean Anderson, the executive uh, producers of the show. So they, oh, they cool. snuck him into the episode there. Yep. Must thought he looked young enough to fit in as a cadet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And if you do own the DVDs, there's a hidden Easter egg here where um, it's a, there's a commentary track with a, a Malazi and Mully on it. And this is the one where they actually sing the lyrics, the, the um, never before heard up till that point lyrics to the SG-1 theme song. So yeah. um, you can either look that up probably on YouTube or, or get your hand on a copy of the DVDs. Yeah. Yeah. You can, I haven't, I, I saw that earlier today and I was going to go and, and grab that so we could tack it onto the end of the, the show and maybe. Still will. Maybe I'll grab my yeah. DVD and we can tack it on. Um, but uh, well, I, I did have flashbacks going back to the uh, academy scene where uh, the cadet, cadet Haley gets called in and she said, you know, she salutes, you know, gets in front of the desk, stops and salutes and says, cadet Haley reports as ordered. And that is a traditional Air Force reporting statement. We learned that, you know, every time we'd have to go <laughs> to our training, training instructor, basic training, Airman Steeker reports as ordered. It's like, it was like flashbacks, like, no, no, that time is over, no. <laughs> but they got it right. I mean, they got, they got, that's the exact statement. It's, and they, they, you know, of course, if you said reporting as ordered, of course they'd make funny, you know, they'd mock you and say, well, what are you reporting? It's, oh, okay. Cause, Cause your report, it's reports being, you're ordered to report. So you are, you have, you, re, you, Aaron Steeker reports as ordered, you know? Gotcha. So. Ah. Yeah, so it was one of those things that they, you know, they do to teach you military discipline. And then, of course, it goes out the window. Like, I don't remember ever doing a reporting statement after I actually got to, you know, my duty station and everything. <laughs> nice little bit of uh, vermicillitude there. Yep. So anything else you guys want to share about this one? I can't think of a thing. Oh, did I mention that I do? I did really like the design of the base. It's got kind of this, like, corrugated steel, but also mm-hmm. kind of like this very modern floor plan. It's kind of, you know, all open very a lot of natural light um it's a very cool off-world base i mean and yep. it's you know very simple and realistic in its construction i mean it has a nice little you know power panel and you can mm-hmm. wire up the walls right to it and stuff yeah <laughs> um but i did really like the especially the interior i mean from the exterior it wasn't uh much to look at but from the interior it was it was a really nice space yep yep and it was there they were trying to make it there long-term science station and exactly I guess not and they don't ever go back there as far as we know or maybe they do and they just they figure out when the will-o'-wisps are yeah <laughs> aggressive and not and just avoid that time of year yeah <laughs> maybe they left the map there and check in every so often yeah yeah so wear like beekeeper outfits covered with batteries or something I don't know <laughs> hey yeah. so do we have any uh titles this week well yes we do as a matter of fact and and some of these are a little bit uh different in the romance languages um they're mostly you know prodigy french italian uh spanish and italian prodigio um in czech we get uh, miracle child which is just uh the way they say prodigy in, in czech uh mm-hmm. zarachne dici um and then in german we get uh what they call uh, the miracle uh, das Funder, mm-hmm. which I think is supposed to, is like an abbreviation of Das Funder Kid, which would be like the, kind, the, one, the kid. wonder kid. Yeah, the miracle yeah. kid. So 
Um, there we, we get uh, Dust, Dust of Wunder. Uh, well, very good. Yeah, they're, they're not, too, not too creative with the titles this week, but that's all right. Um, there is some news we have that there, and we, this is news that's it's not, it's kind of old news, but it's kind of new as well. Uh, that there is a new Stargate game coming out. And Victor, you're the one who, who found it. So why don't you tell us all about it? Yeah, just, it's up on uh, the Steam page. The name of the game is Stargate Timekeepers, which mm-hmm. is better than Time Wasters. But I mean, I <laughs> probably could have come up with a better title. But Stargate Timekeepers, it's a uh, like a tactics. Uh, looks like it might be a real-time tactics game where you have to order your little Stargate team around uh, and have them like you know do tasks and stuff. And it looks like it takes place during the battle at the end of season seven when, when spoiler mm-hmm. alert, um, Stargate, uh, the, you know, the SG is, C is battling a fearsome foe for the fate of the planet. Um, and so there's a new team of new characters um, that we get here. Um, we get Eva McCain, a natural leader and longtime soldier, master of hand-to-hand combat. And we get uh, Max Bolton can climb difficult surfaces. So that's pretty handy. Derek Harper's drones carry out some of the most difficult tasks. So we get your like your tech guy, and then mm-hmm. of course you need a teal character. So we get Ata, Jaffa rebel and sneaky thief, carries a Matok staff for short range combat. So he might also be like your like your tank uh, type character. Each, every one of these games, he's like a tank that everybody can kind of hide behind. And then kind of the wild card is it looks like we get uh, Zuga, a powerful yet good natured Unas veteran. He joins your team. Along with a little friend. Oh. So I don't know who the little friend is. I hope it's like a little ghoul symbiote <laughs> that he carries around. That's what I was, was going to say. It's, yeah. <laughs> so, like the team mascot. <laughs> yeah, or like a, like a Krang type situation or something for <laughs> Ninja Turtles. But yeah, so that should be, a, uh, that should be interesting at least. I mean, a Stargate game is better than no Stargate game. And the graphics look pleasant. Fortunately, it's not the... Uh, the uh... MMO RPG that was promised so many years ago that would have been yeah. so cool to have, but it's still it's you know it's it is a you can see some pictures and it's mostly just the scenery you know you don't you really can't see any kind of gameplay or anything like that on on Steam but Stargate Timekeeper is something to keep an eye out for. Um, it doesn't right now it doesn't show that it's going to have multiplayer which is too bad because that'd be fun to have yeah you know do like a multiplayer stream and uh, but we'll see what happens we'll see. Uh, what happens is it comes out the line. It, it doesn't have a release date or anything like that. So it could be, you know, it could be any time in the next year or two. It could be never, it could be vaporware <laughs> too. So, yeah, but definitely we will, uh, stream that when it comes out, I think as, as the first, yeah. you know, uh, you know, multimedia Stargate, you know, fiction type product experience, definitely that to come along in many years. Yeah. We'll definitely, uh, yeah, we'll have to see how about setting that up. And uh, I'll definitely be I'll definitely be getting it when it comes out. I'll probably put it on my uh, st- my Steam watch list later tonight. So, well, very good. Well, before we close, we actually have some feedback from a couple of our more recent episodes. Uh, first, uh, both these come from YouTube, which, by the way, you can leave feedback on YouTube, and we will make sure to share it. And, of course, and also, if you go to our Discord and leave feedback there, we'll be glad to share that as well. Uh, but PO on YouTube said about the episode Chain Reaction. Not sure I agree with the take on Kinsey's wife. I think she is that ditzy and unaware of pop culture. Also, to me, it seemed it looked to, to me at least it looked like Kinsey signaled to her in some way, either based on what she what he said or how it was said, etc. That tipped her off to contact the NID. It wasn't something she did purely on her own accord. And that that's really possible too. Is she's yeah. you know she's just the politician's wife that's that's there to look good and to be social and that kind of thing. And, Oh, I should call this number that he told me to call. Cause he gave me the word to, you know, to do that. Yeah. I definitely think there's room for both interpretations. It's, yep. it is nice that they leave that sort of ambiguous and, and, you know, open there as well. Yep. And then Paul Leone also on YouTube said about 2010, definitely a classic. I love retro future episodes like this. And I agree with that. You know, that, that's, it, mm-hmm. it really is one of the great episodes. In- indeed. Indeed. <laughs> so now we'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create the secrets of Stargate, including Reese T, Jonathan K, Ronald B, Armand P, and Corey L. I like that the name of the last one, <laughs> spelled the same as mine. Their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of Stargate and all the shows at StarQuest. 
You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. And be sure to follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or many other great podcast apps. We are on YouTube at youtube.com slash StarQuest Media. And then share the shows. After you listen to an episode you really enjoy, share it with your friends, share it with your families. We want to we want to expand our reach. We want to you know, increase our shows. We want to grow our, our audience. So please do share the secrets of Stargate and all the shows here at StarQuest. To find our previous episodes and to send feedback, please visit sqpn.com slash Stargate. And our email for feedback is stargate at sqpn.com. You can follow StarQuest on social media at facebook.com slash StarQuest Media or on Twitter at sqpn. We'll be back next time when we'll be discussing the next episode of SG-1. Until then, Lisa Jones, thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of Stargate. Thanks, Father Corey. And Victor Lambs, thank you as well. Thanks, Father Corey, and I'll never complain about mosquitoes again. <laughs> I don't know, I still will, but we have a lot. They're, they're yeah. pretty big in Montana. <laughs> yeah, oh boy. And once again, I'm Father Corey Stika. Thank you for listening to The Secrets of Stargate on StarQuest. Anyway, I'm sorry, but that just happens to be how I feel about it. What do you think? Oh, it's this episode where they sing the lyrics. I thought it was earlier yeah. in season four, but it's this one where they sing the lyrics on the uh, Stargate. It's the great big world with the great big swirl that you step inside to another <laughs> world. We're talking Stargate. <laughs> it's a crazy trip. You can go quite far and you don't need a car or even a ship. There's Colonel O'Neill and Carter and Daniel and Teal'c. Look out for that goo 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 Yeah, that was it. It was this episode where they actually sang that. I know. I've got to dig out my DVDs or find a DVD player so I can listen to their commentaries.